In this video, I will show you how to do pixel classification using Elastic. And to demonstrate how to do this, I'm using the ISPI challenge data from 2012. So uh, this challenge was about segmenting TEM data. So we see the data, the raw data here on the left. So they had uh, 60 images of that type. And then we see the annotated ground truth data on the right side. So this is also provided in the ISPI challenge. And then, as you can see, the ground truth is, uh, has two labels. So it's, one is the background and one is the membrane. And this data I will use now in Elastic. And I have already opened Elastic, but haven't done anything more. So to do pixel classification, you go to create a new project using pixel classification, and then you can save it somewhere. So let's do example pixel classification. And then this is the main uh, interface then to do pixel classification. And you can see here on the left, that's a workflow that we will be building. So it's kind of, uh, we are saying, what's our input data? Then we select our features. So we will talk in a second about this. We will train the data or we train the classifier. We um, tell Elastic where to save everything. And then um, the batch processing is then we can apply our trained classifier to all uh, to other images. So for the input data, I'm using a part of the ISPI um, set that I call now my train volume. And I can just drag and drop it. And then you can um, enlarge that image, you can zoom in by pressing control and scrolling. And you can go through the different stack uh, slices of the stack also um, with the mouse wheel. That is basically all that we need to know. So we see also here in the shape that we have 15 slices. And each is 512 times 512 pixels. So that's fine. And then we go to the next step, which is the feature selection, which is um, selecting the filters that we want to use for the pixel classification. So here we first see that no features are selected by default, and we need to select some of them. So we go to the select features, and then we can either directly select some here, or we could be more specific. So we open up these kind of um, collections of filters and pick whatever we want. So we see that we have different filters that are sorted to uh, subcategories. And then we see that for each filter, we can um, give different sigma sizes. And that is the filter kernel size of the filter. And then we can choose whether we want to um, to compute the filters in 3D or in 2D. Um, so in this case, it is a Z stack, so we 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 could do it in 3D, but to ease it, uh, we could uh, we I change it to 2D. That's enough. And then one now could select reasonable filters. I will just pick a few now, just for testing. And so I pick those and say, OK. And then what is very nice in Elastic is that you can then look at these um, filtered images. So again, one could enlarge the image. And then here appear now the filtered images as we have selected them. And then again, we can zoom in with the control mouse wheel and we can see the effect of these filters. And also, for example, we could decide, OK, we don't really need that filter, and then go here and remove it again if we really want it. OK, so now that I have selected the filters, um, 
I go to the third step, which is the training step. Again, I like to increase it. And um, we can see here that we have diff like already prepared automatically are two labels. So we could have um, like one label for the membrane. So I'm double clicking here to change the name and one for the background. And I could add more classes if desired. In this case, we said that the ground truth data is also on the two labels, like background and um, foreground. So I leave it like that. And um, I can change. So what I do now is um, to annotate different regions that I would consider backgrounds. And then if I want to have like cytoplasmic membranes, I mark them. And as you can see um, here, we could change the size of our brush. Let's say, for example, like this. And I also, there's a small eraser that helps us to remove labels if they are wrong. And then as soon as we press live update, we can see kind of the training that is, or the classification that is done with the, with these the training on these classified pixels. And uh, then of course I can now, um, start and correct this. So I could say, I don't know, for example, this, oh, this is actually wrong. Flip. So I could say, okay, so this is actually background and so on. Um, then to, for example, go back, let's say you could say, uh, maybe I should add different um, feature set since my classification is not working and to go back there you need to um, toggle out the live update and then you can go back to the feature selection. This is of course far from perfect but this is just for demonstration so I continue here and so let's say we now would be um, satisfied with the classification then I can go to the next step, which is where do I want to save and how do I want to save and what do I want to save? So we can choose um, different things that we want to save for most um, applications or for like fast testing of Elastic, I recommend a simple, a simple segmentation. So we get just a labeled mask and then um, we can also further determine the saving in these settings here. And here what you could do is um, first of course check where it saves it. So here it is saved in the directory where my data set is with a um, default name. And it is saved in the HDF5 format, which is good for big file formats. But if you just want to quickly test the elastic pixel classification, then you can, of course, also save it. And in this case, I will save a multi page TIFF because I have a stack, a TIFF stack. That's in theory already enough. So you would not need to do anything else in that particular example. And then what we of course want to do is now, so of course now I could say export all, and then it would export my input stack and it would export the segmentation of each pixel of this input stack to my um, folder. Okay, and then once we have um, set where we want to save or to export everything and how we want to do that, then what we can do is now um, apply the classifier that we had trained on a certain data set to uh, more data. And this is under the step um, batch processing. 
And so the best thing to do here is to, again, select where are your files. So this I call then the test volume. And um, then, as I said, so it will apply the classifier that we had learned on our input data um, to this new data set. And to do that then, or to do all the entire workflow, what we need to click now is to process all files. And then you can see that that is the progress bar. And it now has saved a file to uh, what we had specified here in the settings of the export. So we can now have a look on the output. So in the export settings, I said the output should be in the same folder as the input. And then we can have a look on this. And I like to use Fiji for this. So um, I will go to the folder now, which is here. And then this is the output that we just have generated using Elastic. And then in Fiji, the best way to look at this is using one of the glass bay lookup tables. And then you can see the classification. Here, I, obviously, I was um, not at all perfectionizing the classification. This is just for demonstration.